The Hare Krishnas are most well known uh, for their chanting in the streets, uh, singing and dancing. And a lot of people ask, you know, wh why do you chant? What is this chanting? So um, the chanting is more than just, I guess you could say, a sentimental idea of singing and dancing in the street. Uh, it's explained that in this age of Kali, uh, the age of quarrel and confusion and hypocrisy, that the religious process or spiritual process for perfection uh, in this age is to chant God's names. And specifically, uh, 500 years ago, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he introduced this chanting, which is known as uh, Kirtan or Sankirtan um, or Harinam Sankirtan, which means uh, Sankirtan means chanting communally or congregationally, and Harinam means the names of God. So we chant Hare, Krishna, and Rama, and these are three names for God. Uh, Krishna means the all attractive supreme person, and Hare is a way of addressing Krishna, it means the energy of God, and Rama means the reservoir of all pleasure. And in essence, when we're chanting the holy names, we're chanting this Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. When we're chanting this Maha Mantra, or great mantra for deliverance, what we're actually doing is we're requesting the Lord to please engage us in His service. Now there are different ways that you can chant. You can chant on the street as we do and called Harinam. Or you can chant in the temple with instruments, um, especially with a harmonium and that's known as bhajan. Um, or you can chant standing up and with drums and uh, kartals and that's called kirtan. Or if you want to chant uh, on prayer beads on your own, that's called mantra meditation. The benefits of chanting Hare Krishna um, are unlimited in one sense, but specifically for us it's described that when you chant uh, the, the names of God, then God is personally present. And it's explained also that God from within the heart, uh, He begins to um, uh, remove the unwanted uh, things that are there in the heart. So it's like a cleansing process. And by, by cleaning out the heart of all these unwanted things, the heart becomes more pure. And Krishna, um, our attraction or attachment to Krishna grows and increases. It's explained that the, the holy names of God or the Maha Mantra is coming from the spiritual platform. And by us connecting to that spiritual platform, we come closer to our eternal identity as a spiritual being and we begin to shed away the material coverings that, or the material designations that separate us from God, from Krishna. We're very fortunate to serve uh, uh, their Lordship, Shri Shri Radhalanda Nishwar, Jagannath Balaji and Subhadra, uh, Shri Shri Gornitai and Giri Govardhan. Uh, these deities or mortis are worshipped daily, seven times uh, a day, with an arti ceremony. And the arti is a very uh, a beautiful uh, expression of our love and worship of God to the Lordships. And it can be explained uh, very much in depth, but in general you're offering the elements of this world uh, in the service of God. Hare Krishna, my name is Moli Manaharadas, and um, I serve here in the temple as a priest. Our main deities are um, Radha and Krishna. And um, these uh, deities, or um, Archa Mortis, as also known, uh, very significant in that they're the first um, large, or the first large set of Radha Krishna deities to be worshipped in the Western world. If you come to, to a temple, you come specifically to um, a Hare Krishna temple or even other Hindu temples, then the first the thing that you'll see mainly will be an arti ceremony. This arti basically, um, simply put, it's a means of reception. Yeah? In um, ancient times, you'll see even now probably in some high class Hindu society, then when someone uh, important comes to one's house, then there's a reception ceremony that is done for them. It's not like they just open the door and sit down. <laughs> there's a reception, yeah, arti. Mm. 
So this is what is happening with what you see on the altar. We are receiving the Lord through, uh, through different items of reception. We have a program called the Yogi Lunch program. And uh, it's actually very dynamic. We have a, a short talk uh, on Bhagavad Gita, basic, uh, basic wisdom from the Vedic scriptures. Um, and we invite guests, students, uh, members of the public to come in and enter our little oasis uh, that is uh, ISKCON London, the Radhakrishna Temple. Every day, apart from Sundays, we have this amazing uh, lunch program, which is called Yogi Lunch. It happens between one and half past two. It usually starts with a quite deep philosophical class, yet presented in a very easygoing, entertaining way. Uh, it's mainly about Bhagavad Gita. And apart from that, we have a chance to serve wonderful prasadam, which is our precious food. And the reason it's called the Yogi Lunch is because when we eat sanctified food, or that is food that has been offered to God with love and devotion, then that food, it connects us to, uh, to God and to the higher spiritual selves. My name is Gopi Bhava, David Darcy, and I work, I've been working in Govindas for the last nine years. All our dishes are offered to Krishna, so that makes it, makes it unique. We try to do it with love and, and you know, affection. We are open uh, from Monday till Saturday between uh, 12 and 9 p.m. and on Saturday, uh, Sunday from uh, 12 until 4. <laughs> we do uh, mainly Indian dishes, but we also have pizzas and lasagnas. Uh, we do tally plates, or you can uh, place individual orders as well. Uh, the most popular uh, plate is the tali. It's a, it's a mixed plate uh, with uh, vegetable dishes and dal, dal soup, rice and salads. Um, and we do different sizes, small and large. But otherwise the lasagna and, uh, and the pizza are also um, very popular. My favorite dish would be uh, definitely the lasagna and from the cakes, the cheese cakes. So that's I, I recommend for whoever asks for my opinion. <laughs> the cakes are apparently quite famous in central London because there are not many places that sell eggless cakes. So we prepare all, our, all of our cakes here freshly every day and without eggs. Uh, so they're vegetarian and we have also quite a few vegan options for vegan customers. We get some of our vegetables and milk products from our Bhaktivedanta Manor, which is near Radlet. Um, and all our uh, dishes are uh, freshly prepared daily. We have many, many regular customers, especially from around the uh, area, from the offices. Uh, lunchtime is very busy for that reason, but also many tourists as well. They're coming from all over the world and they, they, they love Govinda's food and they say they go to, you know, the one in Atlanta, the one in South Africa, the one in, you know, in different countries. Well, definitely they, they, they feel the food is uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, very healthy and, uh, and has a good energy. We also offer a catering service for birthday parties or different occasions. So at the Radhakrishna Temple, uh, ISKCON London, we offer Hatha Yoga classes uh, in order to assist people uh, to be spiritually fit. Also, we have to be physically fit. Uh, primarily, health is very important. Without one's health, then one is not able to practice spiritual life. So the Hatha Yoga classes give uh, people an opportunity to come and keep themselves physically fit and at the same time nourish their uh, spiritual development. The way that I structure the class is individual for people's needs. We start out with the very basic postures, teaching people how to breathe properly. Um, and so if you can barely touch your toes or if you can't touch your toes at all, it doesn't matter because we really take you where you are at. Yoga is a very personal thing, so what one person can do 
another person may not be able to do, but they can both benefit equally. And, um, and so we start out very basic, very gentle, and by strengthening the body using those gentle techniques, we then can progress to some of the other asanas, but then the body's prepared. So whether you've done it for 20 years or you've never done it before, it doesn't matter. We can, we can work with people where they're at. On the second floor, we have a very wonderful shop. And in this shop, we sell a variety of spiritual items. Um, many items imported are coming from India, uh, ranging from jewelry to clothing and incense to uh, deities. A uh, huge variety of transcendental uh, literatures or Vedic scriptures, uh, as well as cookbooks and greeting cards and photographs and posters and, and also many items that can be used if one is practicing a, a lifestyle where you like to avoid using animal products, uh, being vegetarian, uh, then we also avoid that. So many shampoos, soaps and different cosmetics are there and available also. We're open every day, Monday through Sunday. Uh, Monday through Saturday we're open from midday till 8 o'clock. And uh, on Sundays we open from 1 o'clock. It's a little quieter, Sunday morning's a little quieter. The thing that we turn over most would be probably incense. Yeah. I mean the books are very popular and we do sell a lot of books. Um, and we get a lot of customers coming in and asking for incense. Mongolati sweets are quite popular, we have the, the milk sweets that have been offered to Krishna. Music CDs are quite popular, um, some of the dresses, um, the gent gentlemen's tops and uh, dotis, ladies' uh, t-shirts we do also, DVDs, um, the murtis, we have little statues of Krishna, those are quite popular. Uh, neck beads, quite often people come in looking for neck beads because they only last a certain while. Uh, chanting beads, people who are just um, interested in Krishna consciousness for the first time or if they've lost the Japa beads. And, uh, so. Mostly we have uh, books by the founder Acharya of ISKCON, International Society for Krishna Consciousness, Srila Prabhupada. Um, and then we also have books um, by his disciples and they're all within the kind of spiritual transcendental literature kind of genre, <laughs> if you will. Um, and then we have some Song books, uh, Vaishnava songs, um, some small selection of books for children, coloring books and story books for children. Um, and um, cookery books are quite popular as well. We have a section of selection of cookery books. Uh, we have some that I suppose you could you could categorize as art, uh, as art, art books, so paintings and illustrations of Krishna, um, and uh, some kind of. Uh, things more about Indian culture, Vedic culture, and almost like travel guides to India, different holy places and things like that. So the Radhakrishna Temple, Iskand London, uh, is open from 9 in the morning until 10 at night, and everyone is welcome, so please come in and, and visit us. <laughs>